G'day folks. Well, I've made it back from Basketville. Uh, as you know, um, we only did sort of, I think it was four laps. It was just a sort of a practice run to, to get us warmed up for the racing. Uh, I was a bit flustered when I did that video. I, uh, it really threw me out. It was totally unexpected. And I sort of was a bit confused and didn't realise what was sort of going on with it. It sort of wasn't until I was heading home. I had time to think and, and I've sort of worked it all out now. And Oh, it's a weird one. Uh, well, it turns out I've had a boost spike big time and it's pushed a head gasket. Uh, the motor seems fine. It's just fuming fairly well uh, out of the breather box and it's sort of blowing a bit of blue smoke and that's expected from a, a blown head gasket. There's no weird sounds going on in the car. I thought uh, down there when I was sort of checking it out uh, that there was noises coming from it, but it, yeah, no, it seems fine. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's all it is, sort of a, a push gasket, and we can sort of get onto that one. But I did find the problem, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute. I sort of want to make a mention, guys, uh, that there was, I had a few guys come down and, and um, introduce themselves down at Basketville that sort of made the little trip to, to check out my car, and... Uh, and meet me, which was really nice, and I thank you guys for that. It's uh, that was lovely, and there was one guy in particular, uh, Simon. Thank you, mate, for introducing yourself. Uh, and I'm, I'm look, I feel sorry that you missed out on seeing the car run around the track too. Uh, it was just unfortunate, but I hope you had a bit of a gander at it. And um, look, next time I won't let you down. I'll be a little bit more sorted in that sense, but it, it did throw me so. Uh, yes, it's, it's a shame because it was a long way to go. It was 580 kilometer round trip, and um, but it was well worth it. It was so well worth it. Uh, the track itself is undeniably just amazing, guys. It really is. Since they've um, put the new top on it, it's oh god, it's good. It's so friggin' smooth. It's just amazing. It really is. Um, and the trailer, towing it down, is, uh, was such a pleasure. Like, I was a little bit sort of, it was the first big outing for it, and um, it's the last thing you need is any little dramas going on. Um, I've sort of towed it, you know, three or four times to Simmons. Um, it's proved itself on the shorter trips. But on the longer trips, you know, you just never know. I only run 28 pounds of tyre pressure. On the all, all of the six wheels, and look, I was a bit. I pulled up sort of halfway down to Barsky and checked the tyre temperature. No problems. They were beautiful. Uh, I thought they might have sort of heated up a little bit, but no, no issues there. All the bearings seemed fine. So it was a beautiful. Gee, it toes so well, folks. I just can't get over it. I'm going to rename it from the Streamliner to the Dreamliner. Because that's what it is. It's a dream to tow. <laughs> so it's just absolutely beautiful. I'm going to put some carpet inside the... I'm going to line it out the floor. And the wheel arches in carpet. Some sort of like marine carpet. And I want to do that to it. So I'll go back over that. Uh, for those who have sort of missed out on the build of the trailer. Because I did include it into my channel. And... I'll, I'll do a bit of an overview on it and I'll have a bit of a chat about what I sort of did to the trailer to, um, to get it to that stage because it is truly, I'm just so proud of it guys. Um, it did take a lot of work but gee it's so worth it. It is so worth it. Alright, well as you know we blew a head gasket, uh, only got sort of three third lap in and I was going up, up the hill. There's a bit of a hill on the track itself. It's a fantastic little track. I've actually been down there before, guys, so what I'll do, I'll put the link up in the comments uh, so you can check out the actual track. And I've actually did a little bit of racing down there, and um, one particular video, it's actually not a bad little vid. And uh, I'll put that up so for you guys to check out and get a sense of the track. And that was before it was sealed. 
Uh, I was on my third lap, we were sort of just playing around, I hadn't actually built up any boost, I'd sort of just started to spool the turbo and, and things were sort of a little bit sort of cold still, it hadn't sort of got a lot of heat into it. And I was coming up the hill and I just decided I'll get into it really, you know, hard. And she just whipped up in the spool, it was just insane, you know, like spun the tyres in second, grabbed, like shot it into top gear, like third. And it, and it just took off and it, yeah, it happened so quick, you know, you just don't get time to react. And it just spun the tyres and just cooked them like nothing and as soon as it started to ramp, bang, the bloody smoke coming out of it. And I just knew something, well I knew I heard it, but I was just a bit confused. I thought, geez, that, that doesn't normally make that sort of power. Um, it was just like a bit of nitrous, so I couldn't get over it, it was incredible. And uh, obviously, just an overboost of whether how much it went. I'm tipping it went over 20 pounds because um, it just went off its head, really did. Got to the top of the hill, went down around sort of the back, down onto the back straight, and I gave it another little bit, just a few pounds of boost, and it was just smoke coming out of it. So, sort of pulled in then and uh, came in and looked at it, and I was, oh, I don't know, it was just, it threw me right out. I wasn't expecting it at all. Um, and that's one of the things that, uh, you know, I've been going so well with the car, I haven't had sort of any real issues as far as, um, you know, the turbocharging side of it with the engine, all that sort of tune side of it, and to, for that to happen was very unexpected, so um, it did throw me. So the video I put up, I was a bit confused and, uh, yeah, all over the place. But, We've had time to settle down and I've found the problem and you're never going to guess it guys. It's something so bloody stupid. I'm really kicking myself over it. Uh, it was a lack of attention to detail that's caused this. Uh, I've checked the wastegate. That's perfect. Working like a beast. Uh, I've actually pulled the line off the manifold and we've got around 15 psi uh, running through the system, like through the boost controller, through to the wastegate. I've pulled the line off it, 15 per side, we've got nothing coming through to the wastegate to um, make sure there's, you know, for it to open. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute, and I track down to the boost controller. Turns out there's nothing wrong with that. I'll show you guys. It's just one of those things that, um, well, it's, it's my fault, plain and simple. And I'll show you what happened. I've had the... Hang on, I'll just give you a like that. I've had the boost controller mounted like this, guys. And I've just... It was only sort of just jerry-rigged in to... Just to get it by for now. Uh, I did plan on actually uh, doing something a little bit better down the track. But what happened was, when I mounted it, I've actually... And you can see it there, if I sort of angle my hand, I might do it with my other hand actually. You can see it. Look, it's ended up with a kink in it. Right there. It was actually worse than that, but that's how, when I taped it down nice and tight and snugged it out, it had a rotten kink in it. So, that's what's caused the boost spike. Obviously, getting couldn't get the signal through the way it was there like that, and mm, my reasoning why it didn't do it before. Well, I drive this very cautiously, guys. Uh, it's very rare I get on the throttle flat out. Um, the other times down at Simmons. I sort of ease into it, I do four to five laps before I really sort of uh, get on it and even then I don't sort of push uh, push on the throttle that hard so soon. So, And it gets really warm in here too and this is only sort of soft rubber. And I think it was just getting enough air bleed through it uh, to sort of control the wastegate. And the time down at Barsky, well it was only sort of the third lap in Really, the car hadn't sort of got right up to temp, and I just I got caught up in the moment. Like the track was just unreal, and uh, I just got into it really hard, 
and obviously hadn't built any boost up before and all of a sudden just get into it it had no sort of pressurization in this side of it and yeah the, and it just ramped so quickly so it never had time to, for the wastegate to open and obviously um, you know just got that massive over boost and that's all it is guys this is unbelievable I've been playing around with it and oh god you can control it in, just it's so like it's one turn per pound of boost and uh, you can sort of yeah I'm going to fiddle with that a little bit more and play around with the sort of the the boost setting like from 14 pound back because uh, it's just so good I've been sort of putting the air like pumping air into it and uh, it's really controls it really well yeah I was very surprised with it I've never sort of played around with the boost uh, setting on it and um, always sort of got it to where I was happy and just left it but uh, yeah oh it's a shame you know all that work you put into things and then something so stupid can cause it but anyway that's you live and learn guys that's what it's all about so at least I know what caused it and I can uh, you know move on now and we'll start tearing this down or pulling it apart nicely and uh, just take my time and I want to do a sort of real nice job on it and clean the parts again and you know, go through the notions of replacing the head gaskets and checking it all over make sure there's nothing else sort of damaged and we'll go from there but I'm fairly confident uh, I've sort of dodged a bullet in that sense. I'm going to hold back just for the moment on the oiling mod. Of uh, I'm really close to finishing it and when I do sort of finish it I'm going to go right over it again and give out all the sizes on the drill bits that I've used uh, for all the various BSP fittings and, yeah, and talk about it and go into depth on what I've sort of done to the block. It's coming up really well. I'm really happy with it, but uh, we'll just uh, just hold off for now, just for the moment. I want to show you a little picture, guys, before I sort of sign out. That um, down at the track, I thought it was just it was just done on my phone, and it was just one of those picks that I fluke. Well, you, you sort of fluke. Look at that. God, just the, the way the light was that morning and just incredible. God, it was one out of the box down there for the weather too. It was awesome. Mm. <laughs> well, guys, my, uh, my tyres have turned up yesterday. So I'm going to do a vid on, separate vid on those. Uh, oh, God, they look the goods. Oh, they're incredible. They've just... Unbelievable, the quality of them, the finish of them is just so neat and, and they're really well made. So I'm really excited about uh, those tyres. So we'll have a chat about them, talk about them. I'll pull the wheels off this and I'll just mock the tyre up um, in under the garden. We'll just It'll just give you a sense of what it looks like. But uh, I may go back down the track uh, over the winter time and testing with the old tyres on. So I reckon in the next two uh, couple of months I'll pop them on. But for now I'd like to get at least another couple of more runs out with the old tyres, get it all sorted and uh, we'll swap them out. All good. The young fellas pulled the engine out of the uh, Hilux and uh, he's well on the way so in the next couple of weeks I'm going to pull the motor out of my ute we're going to start mocking it all up and uh, we'll go from there. So that's moving along beautifully. We've got the bell housing on the gearbox. He's painted the gearbox up. God, he's done a nice little job. And uh, he's had the pressure cleaner up, cleaning it all out and getting it all nice and clean. And, and I think as you saw in the other video, he put the, he's taken the tray off. He's going to make a little separate tray up. We've got some great, we've got a great idea for what we're going to do with mounting the turbo. So. We've all got it all in our head and we know what we're sort of doing with it and uh, it's coming along. So I'll do a little update vid on that in the coming few days. So that's that's awesome. Alright guys, well we had a fantastic time down there. I must admit it was, it was well worth the trip. Even though I only ran three laps, got my trailer completely dialed in. I'm so thrilled with that. That's just such a relief now. And... Uh, 
We'll fix it. That's fine. It's part of turbo life. Uh, over something stupid, mm, that's all right. Look, I'll call it the stupid comeback build, <laughs> repair job, because that's what it was. Uh, but sometimes things like that happen, you know, guys. We can we can be so caught up with everything else and with the how parts work and all that, and then when we go to do route stuff and do stuff ourselves, mm, it's human error. It happens. <laughs> Alright guys, well, I'll pop one up soon. Catch you later.